Um, hello, everyone. Uh, it's my honor to uh, make this orientation for all of you uh, to introduce my research work. Uh, so I named it as a uh, um, uh, novel lead double hydroxide nano platform uh, working at the ultra sensitive T1 MR contrast agent and the serenostic agent uh, for mass tumor diagnosis and the complete treatment. Uh, so the first part is the exploration working as a uh, uh, contrast agent. So uh, the left one is a uh, uh, technical machine in the hospital for the MR um, magnetic resonance imaging. Uh, so, uh, but how it works, uh, when the people lay on the table bed, uh, the uh, hydrogen atoms in human body will be active and finally generate uh, this uh, right imaging, like this one. But actually, uh, only hydrogen atoms in our human body is not enough to uh, generate an uh, accurate uh, diagnosis. So that's why we need the assistance of contrast agent um, <clears throat> to improve the uh, diagnosis accuracy. So normally, the most popular in the hospital is the T1 intravenous contrast agent. Uh, uh, that is uh, galenium uh, extracellular agents. But uh, actually, uh, these agents uh, has some uh, issues, like the first one is the uh, adverse health issue, uh, like the nephrogenic systemic fibrosis, which is quite serious for the uh, patient with the um, kidney uh, issue. Uh, then the second issue is the uh, uh, intracranial deposition in the uh, a patient, uh, like this one, the patient after several uh, contrast agents in cash, uh, injection, so uh, there's some bright point uh, in the uh, brain area. That's the galenium uh, rotation. So we are thinking uh, maybe we can design a safer uh, T1 MR contrast agent. Uh, we know that gadolinium is not necessary microenvironment in the human body, but at least we can choose some uh, uh, essential micronutrients uh, like the manganese or copper uh, mental contents, uh, which can show similar uh, T1 MR contrast ability as uh, what the uh, gadolinium did. Uh, the second point we are thinking uh, we should keep the quick response as uh, the normal gadolinium contrast agents did. Uh, so, which is quite important for the actual diagnosis. Uh, so we think uh, maybe the ultra-sensitivity pH response can achieve this uh, goal. Like, uh, because of the uh, upregulation of uh, uh, metastasis in the tumor microenvironment, so the extracellular pH is a little uh, acidic, like, uh, which is around uh, 6.4 to 7. Uh, so we are thinking maybe we can design kind of new nanoparticle uh, when it's uh, uh, diffused in the blood vessel, nothing happened, but when it enters into the tumor area, they can respond to the pH uh, variation very fast, uh, then light up this area, uh, tell the doctor there's a tumor here. So it's a kind of uh, tumor-specific contrast agent. Uh, then the third point, uh, we know um, we want to uh, prolong the uh, imaging response time. So I, we think maybe it's important for the uh, imaging guarded surgery, because we know surgery needs a long time uh, to uh, realize the um, guidance. Uh, so based on these three points, one nanoparticle occurs in my mind. The, uh, I named it as uh, lead double hydroxide, or just to call it LDH. Um, uh, this nanoparticle is a kind of alkaline hydroxide, which can respond to the pH variation uh, very fast. Uh, uh, here's the detail. Uh, previously, my supervisor Gordon and Professor Max uh, cooperated with uh, the uh, Oxford uh, pharmacists uh, to commercialize the uh, uh, nanomedicine, which named as ibuprofen loaded by the lead double hydroxide LDH. So uh, this medicine was taken up by the uh, patient, uh, by the oral delivery. When they enter into the stomach with quite low pH, they can respond very fast. 
uh, to uh, dissolve like immediately uh, then local uh, to form a kind of localized salt buffer uh, to increase the ibuprofen solubility. Finally, the uh, absorption of ibuprofen in the stomach will increase. So uh, based on this feature, uh, we are thinking maybe we can design a kind of uh, ultra-sensitive uh, T1MR contrast agent with LDH. Uh, so here is the uh, 3D model of LDH. The host layer uh, is made of uh, octahedral um, units. Like the central area is the mental contents, the main part is magnesium, uh, small part is aluminum, uh, and then called uh, cooperated uh, by the uh, hydroxide groups. Uh, then we are thinking maybe we can just uh, simply uh, replace some magnesium with manganese. So here's the result. Uh, basically, the, form, the morphology is uh, plate-like morphology. And uh, uh, how about their uh, T1 relaxivity? So here, uh, the value, uh, the biggest value means the uh, uh, in, uh, the T1 MR uh, intensity increased a lot. So let's see uh, when we adjust the pH from 7.4 to 7, the T1 relaxivity increased a lot, uh, much higher than that of uh, commercial gallium contrast agent, uh, which is around the 3.4. So uh, the first goal, uh, ultra pH sensitivity working as a T1 MR contrast agent uh, looks worked. So the second one, uh, we want to design a kind of uh, intracellular contrast agent, not like the uh, commercial gallium, which is kind of uh, uh, extracellular agent. So we're thinking maybe the intracellular will uh, prolong the uh, imaging time. So we tested the uh, cellular uptake of the nanoparticle. Uh, the uh, magnets LD uh, loaded by the Psi-5 by the confocal test, we realized uh, this nanoparticle can be uh, taken up very well. So the second goal, uh, the intracellular uptake uh, achieved. Uh, so the third part is the in vivo imaging test. Uh, we want uh, design a kind of fast, uh, a kind of uh, magnesium LDH uh, contrast agent with faster but prolonged imaging time. Uh, so. Here's the results. Uh, the mass uh, with the uh, magnes LDH injection by intravenous. Uh, on the first hour post the injection, we saw uh, this nanoparticle can accumulate in the tumor tissue to light up this area. Then keep imaging for almost two days. Uh, on the third days, uh, this nanoparticle was biodegraded. So uh, their third goal is a uh, faster, long T1 MR response was achieved. So a quick summary about the um, first part. Uh, we designed a kind of uh, magnes LDH uh, to test the possibility working as a, a, a T1 MR contrast agent, which has ultra-sensitive pH response. Uh, so it's a kind of tumor-specific uh, contrast agent, uh, which may, uh, can work in as a serenostic agent cause, uh, with a prolonged imaging time. So the next part, we test the uh, serenostic capacity. Here we just simply uh, replace the magnes part with the Cooper uh, contents. Uh, why choose Cooper? Because um, uh, as I introduced previously, Cooper can uh, works as the T1 MR imaging uh, component. And uh, uh, at the same time, some late researchers reported that uh, Cooper based the uh, uh, nanoparticle which, uh, with sufficient uh, free carriers can uh, respond to the NRR very well and transfer the light energy to the thermal energy. So we want to design kind of uh, imaging guarded uh, dual functional uh, nanoparticle, which can uh, realize the photosomal therapeutic uh, and the uh, and, uh, chemotherapy. So here is the in vivo results. Uh, the left part is uh, uh, imaging results. Uh, this uh, Cooper 
LDH can working as a T1 uh, MR contrast agent. On the uh, 24-hour post-injection, uh, the uh, intestinal tumor area uh, increased a lot. So on this time point, uh, we treat the mass uh, with uh, NR illumination for three minutes. Uh, the uh, NR wavelength is 808 nanometer, uh, with the power in test is one power per centimeter. Uh, this condition is from the uh, control group. We know uh, this condition is uh, safe for the normal mass without any uh, Cooper LDH injection. But when we treat the mass with the uh, Cooper LDH accumulation in the tumor part, uh, then the uh, temperature of the tumor area increased a lot, which is uh, uh, above than uh, 50 uh, degree. So here's a final uh, in vivo therapeutic results. Um, uh, basically, the uh, simple uh, chemotherapeutic uh, results maybe show a little bit uh, works, but not so well. Uh, only the uh, single uh, photosomal therapy, uh, at first, the tumor can be ablated very well, but uh, after several days, uh, there's a, a recurrency happen. Only they do functional group with a do functional uh, photosomal and uh, chemotherapeutic. Uh, this one without any tumor recurrency. So uh, here's the actual results. Uh, compare the do functional group and the, the uh, single photosomal group. Uh, on the uh, six days, uh, we can see the uh, tumor ablation in these two groups. But on the 18 days, difference happen. Uh, this one, uh, due functional group, the tumor still are uh, becoming smaller, smaller, but uh, for the single uh, photosomal group, the tumor uh, recurred. So uh, based on this, on the uh, 24 days of post-therapy, we are uh, uh, not match the two mass, one from the uh, due functional group, another one from the single photosomal group. Uh, so this one, uh, we cannot see any uh, tumor residue uh, in the uh, subcutaneous tissue, but uh, this single photosomal group uh, parent uh, tumor recurrency. So uh, that's uh, all my uh, research work. Uh, thanks for my supervisor, uh, Gordon, and co-supervisor, Sophia, and uh, my uh, colleagues, my family and friends, thanks for all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much for this very nice talk. So we have time for some questions. So any questions from the audience? Okay, let me just ask you one question. These uh, particles that you have made, how, how big are these particles? This particle? Uh, the first one is just uh, uh, 50 centimeters. Here, I will show you the TM readout. Uh, here. Right. See the skill bar. Uh, the, 15, uh, the, the next one, because we want to design more uh, defects, so the another particle says uh, much sl smaller, maybe uh, 25 right. nanometers. So for, for this imaging, I mean, do you have any idea how much is really accumulating in the uh, tumor yeah, and what happens to the rest of these particles? Um, actually, we did uh, the uh, bell distribution about another particle. Mm. Uh, they accumulate amount, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> they accumulate amount which is around 3.6% uh, of uh, nanoparticles in the tumor area. Uh, the left part, uh, most of them are accumulated in the liver. Uh, but after several days, they will be degraded because it's a kind of uh, uh, yeah, no oxide. And there is no adverse effect in the liver, or the liver enzymes are not changed. Or have you looked into those? Oh uh, yeah, uh, I did. Uh, we did the HE thing about that part. Uh, no obvious change to these yeah. organs. So yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. You have to use the microphone. Thank you very much. Maybe I missed that part of your talk. Oh, what are the temperatures that they can be, 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 be reached by these particles when you use the therapy? Sorry? 
The, is, uh, you, are, you are using the, um, the laser to heat up the particles, yes? What yes. Is, did you measure the temperature, how yes. hot it yes. will get? And uh, can you just discuss that? And also, do you think that the temperature that you actually measure is actually the real temperature that these particles can actually reach? Or do you think it is higher if you're actually able to go inside the cell and uh, measure the temperature at the particle when it heats up? I need to show you some, but I, I, I forgot to. So, uh, you mean the, this not, yeah. Do you think that the temperature actually, that's what you measure at the surface, I imagine, but you think that inside it'll be even hotter at the tumor, inside the tumor? Yeah, I, I understand this part, but uh, actually it's quite difficult to realize the uh, actual temperature. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, the surface maybe is uh, um, 55 degrees, but we believe the, in the inside area, the temperature much higher than, because we did the, um, uh, just the, the photothermal conversion about the uh, barrel uh, nanoparticle uh, in the, uh, just the liquid like the water. Uh, actually, the temperature uh, increased uh, very fast, like uh, 60 degree or just uh, 70. So, yeah, we believe maybe they set the temperature much higher than the surface. So, yeah, I guess that's why <laughs> we saw the uh, immediate uh, ablation. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you.